Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, Parsha told out, so we, we already mentioned that, you know, theoretically Yitzchak should be the main character in, uh, in Told out. He deserves to be the main character at some point. Um, but he, he basically isn't, um, right? He's the main character for like a Perek, right? We, the, the main characters of this Parsha are clearly, clearly... Yaakov and Esav, right? I mean, Rivka gets a, a lot more press time than Yitzchak ever does in last week's Parsha and even in this week's Parsha, to be fair. Um, so the fundamental question of Toldot um, in multiple iterations is what? Who is Yitzchak's heir? Right? Meaning, we don't really talk much about Yitzchak. We go straight from Avram and Yitzchak being Avram's heir and then straight to who is Yitzchak's heir going to be, right? Because the first story we basically hear in Toldot after the kids are born is the selling of the Bechar. Then we have like a Perek break and we go to Grar for a bit. And then we have the drama of the stealing of the, of the Bracha. Right? But basically the whole um, story is how does it happen that Yaakov, who's not the Bechar, right, becomes the, <coughs> the chosen one. Right? That's basically the story of told in a nutshell. <coughs> um, and there's a lot to say uh, say on it, but uh, but to get you thinking uh, on the parsha, here's the key question that has no answer. Okay, <laughs> no good answer. According to Chumash, why does this even happen? Why is Yaakov chosen and Esav not chosen? So you see, you give on it. And and so what? Esav was gonna die. Good. Why weren't they both chosen? Right? To ask it harder. Why, why weren't they both chosen? Well, they both had their own brachot. Why, but why weren't they both chosen to be the heirs of, of Avram? It's entitled to be the heir. What? It seems like the firstborn is entitled to be the heir. Definitional. Didn't happen to Jacob's kids. That's not definitional. Right? Meaning every question you're going to give me, or every answer you're going to give me, is not going to be true. He's the Bechor, right? The Bechor is the joke of Bereshit. Right? The Bechor, what is the role of Bechor in all of Sefer Bereshit? Right? This is one thing you should realize. What is the role of Sefer, of Bukhar in Sefer Breshit? Literally every single time. It's not usual. Yes, right? It's the person who theoretically should be chosen and is not once in the entire book. Right? Literally the entire book. Right? Kayan gets kicked out after he kills his brother. He's replaced by son number three. Right? Shame Chaman Yafet? No. Not, not, ex- right? Yeah, Yafet's the firstborn. Right? Not the firstborn. Avram? Avram is not the firstborn. Nahor is the firstborn. Right? Then you get, right, Yishmael? Firstborn. Right? He's not chosen. Right? Yaakov? Sure. He buys the, 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 the firstborn rights. That's, right? It's a joke when you realize there's a pattern. And then, Yaakov? Reuven is not Bachor. So how do we get around it? We say Yosef is the Bukhar, right? He's not the Bukhar. Reuven is the Bukhar. Not only does Reuven not get it, who else doesn't get it? Shimon or Levi, right? Reuven, Shimon, and Levi don't get it, right? Yehuda and Yosef, right? It's the fourth son of the less liked wife and the firstborn of the most liked wife who really isn't even her firstborn because who is her firstborn? Think about it, remember? Yes, because Rachel gave a surrogate, right? So, sure, Yosef is technically a firstborn, except she had kids before that, right? Through a surrogate, essentially. How right? did they so, back then? They gave their maidservants, right? That's what Sarah does, that's what Rachel does, and that's what Leah does. So, literally, the Bechor, the Bechor is the biggest joke, right? It's the biggest joke. So, you could say that the answer is he bought the Bechor. Right? That would be very nice, except A, that doesn't prove much. B, that it would only make him Bahor, that wouldn't make him the only chosen one. Right? The fundamental question you've got to ask is how is it and why is it that Asav gets kicked out? Right? It gets kicked out, or as Ray Leapdag likes putting it, right? How did this become a Bechira story and not a Bechora story? Right? Right, that's really the question here. Right? How did it happen that this is a Bechira story and not a Bechora story? He was chosen rather than demoted. And what is the answer? Rivka didn't like him. What? Rivka didn't like him. That doesn't, that's not enough. Right? Because according... And this is, today what I want to do is I want to get you thinking. Right? Rivka didn't like him. Rivka didn't like him for what? To do what? To get what? Presumably the Bechor. Right, the Bechorah, 
Right? Where do you see any evidence in this week's parsha that Rivka didn't want him to be part of the family? Zero. Right? There is no evidence of that. Right? Yitzchak, clearly, that was not the case. He wanted to bless him. Good. Tell me, what else? What the, why else? How did Asaph get kicked out? Why? How did it happen? He's red. What? He's red. That's a great answer. Right? So what's Chazal's answer? Yeah, Chazal's answer is that he's evil. But the Torah conspicuously does not do what? Say that. Right? To the point where the Pashtanim assume that... He was a fine, neutral guy, right? What the only there's one sin that is ascribed to Asab in the entire part, and that is he was with the Vayiv is and That is it, right? You can try other things, Vayochal, Vayesh, right? These aren't normally the crimes for which you lose your place in the family, right? Eating, drink, right? Just not. Is the thing of right? the coat of um, Midrash as well? Oh. That he had the coat of Nimrod. Yeah. yeah, but that wouldn't explain it, right? So some people say, oh, he's a hunter. No, he's. So what? Right? He's a hunter. Right? Yodei at Sayyid. Ooh. Right? So Chazal say he was, it's not a hunter, but he was, a murderer. He, was he was a murderer. He was Oved Bimir Ma. But what are Chazal are clearly trying to answer a question? Right? It's a bad answer. Right? And the irony of the whole thing, right, is despite the fact that there is no clear answer to the question why he is not chosen. There's no clear answer to what he did wrong, right? Chazal obviously have to fill it in to try to answer this question. There is no answer, right? Who is the most, single most hated person in all of Tanakh? Period. Asaph, right? The Haftarah is a particularly striking one, right? You open the Haftarah from the first paragraph of Malachi, the second Pasuk is, Ahavti Elchem Amar Adonai, Vamartem Bame Ahavtanu. God said, I loved you. And they said, Really? How did that express itself exactly? He says, Hello, Ach, Esav, Yaakov, Numa, Adonai, Vahavit, Yaakov. His answer is, Yaakov had a brother, and I loved Yaakov, but Esav, Saneti, and Esav, I hated. That's his answer. Right? The Jews say to God, How do we know that you chose us, that you loved us? And the answer is, Because I love you and I hate Esav. That is the answer. Right? What? Poor Esav. <laughs> that is the answer. Right? He says, "Vasim et harav shmama v'nachlato letanot midbar." Right? I'll prove to you how much I love you. Right? I hate Esav. I made his mountains desolate and his his inheritance into a desert. Right? That's what it is. Right? And so, right today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with a question. Right? Is that is really what you that right? The challenge of Toldo and the challenge of the rest of right. Of Vayetze, right, and Vayishlach. And to be fair, parts of Yechezkel and Malachi and Yishayahu and <laughs> right. The question everyone's trying to figure out is how did this happen? But the simplest answer is what? What is the simplest answer in Tanakh? Right now, what Chazal do? Because Chazal trying to get out of this answer. Right? But what is the simplest answer? I just read it to you. No. Yes. And Ahav Saneti. Right? And then Yaakov Ahavti. Is that God said, I hate Esav and I love Yaakov. Why? It's not clear because what does Ahav mean in Tanakh? I chose. And Sane means I pushed away. And the irony of the entire parsha that we're, that everyone's trying to get out of is I was listening to a share this morning by, by Elias Sis and he put it very nicely he said the challenge is that the simplest answer Tanakh had is Lama in Hebrew they have a nice way of saying this which is Lama Kacha right why because it is right that's the only answer explicit in Tanakh ever is Lama Kacha. Right? The Jews say, how do we know you're chosen? And the answer was, and, and here's the key, because there was an option of choosing you and Esav, or only Esav, and I didn't do it. And that is the only proof you need that God loves the Jewish people. But there is no explicit answer of why in all of Tanakh. Right? Now, Chazal obviously try to figure out the answers, but if I leave you this thought, why would the Torah leave it so cryptic? Shouldn't matter. Oh, it really should matter, right? I think it's the opposite. It's not that it shouldn't matter. 
is that it doesn't matter. Right? I Meaning at a deep level, it sort of doesn't matter. Right? I mean, the same thing is by Avram. Remember, we conspicuously don't tell you before Avram's chosen why he's chosen. Right? You find out later why he's worthy of being chosen. But at some level, the message of Tanakh is that there may be a good justification. But in the end of the day, Bechira is in God's hands and it is inexplicable. Right? It cannot quite be penetrated. Right? There is a certain level of chok to it. Okay? Now, we're not going to leave it there, right? Chazal don't leave it there, and there are hints that it's not only about that. But at some level, the cryptic thing of Tanakh comes down to that, is that God wants... Now, and what's, what's the benefit of that? And this is the last thing I'll say today. What's the benefit of it being cryptic? It's not reversible. Right? If you know why someone is chosen... If they violate that, they can be unchosen. But if you never quite know why somebody is chosen, right, then you can't articulate a good argument for why they should be unchosen. Right? And I think that's part of it. That the Torah, at some level, right, not this is not the end of the story, but at some level wants you to believe that Bechira is in God's hands. We can't put our fingers on why, but as Malachi said, you just got to believe that it is so. Lama Kacha. And there's something weird about that, and something scary about that, something a bit confusing about that, but also something powerful about that, right? Which is, we'll try to get to a little bit why that might not be the full story, but that's at least something to think about in in uh, in Tuldog, Okay.